Today, we're taking a look at MSI's new RTX 5080 Expert. This is a graphics card that MSI was showing off at this year's Computex trade show, and they were very excited about it, claiming the unique design offered excellent thermals at a very low operating volume. Interestingly though, this isn't the first time we've seen such a design from MSI, and although I didn't review the GeForce 40 series Expert graphics cards, plenty of reviewers did, and the reviews weren't exactly glowing. And this is because the previous generation Expert models were rather expensive, they ran fairly hot, and they weren't particularly quiet either. In fact, they were only a very slight improvement over Nvidia's Founders Edition. So it's going to be interesting to see if MSI can improve upon the previous design to the point where the Expert justifies the price premium. Now there are a number of design changes, so that's good news, particularly to the cooling, so hopefully these changes do result in a better product. And MSI is extremely confident with this one, so much so that they have an embargo launch, which was actually earlier today for this model, but we decided to release at our usual time. Anyway, before we go over the RTX 5080 Expert and then tear it down, today's sponsor spot is brought to you by Be Quiet and their Pure Power 13M Power Supply Series, available in either 550, 650, 750, 850, or 1000 watt capacities. The Pure Power 13M is an ATX 3.1 compliant and PCIe 5.1 compliant power supply with semi passive cooling and one massive 12 volt rail. All models include native integration of both the 12 volt high power connector as well as four PCIe 6 plus 2 pin connectors for support for current and previous generation GPUs. All models are fully modular, meaning you only need to install the cables you'll be using, making installation quick and tidy. Also, for that peace of mind, they're backed by a 10 year warranty, so for more information, please check the link in the video description. Okay, so externally the RTX 5080 Expert looks fairly similar to the RTX 4080 Super Expert, but as you start to look more closely there are a number of changes. The aluminium fan shroud is still a sort of pale gold colour, but the design has a few subtle changes, most notably of which is the pass-through area which is a different shape and features less chrome dots, so that's something. Front on though, the card still looks very classy, giving it a more professional look when compared to the RGB Gamer Gear. From the side, MSI has gone with what I would describe as a less clean design. And this is because previously I felt the GeForce RTX branding blended in better with the card, but now you're getting black text, while there's a black band at the top of the card, which is essentially the side of the backplate. And look, this looks fine. I just don't think it's as clean as the previous design, which was wrapped entirely in that sort of pale gold color. Then we have a cutout for the 12 volt high powered connector, which is fine, perhaps a little difficult to access, but it's not problematic. It does come with a nice cover, which provides a really clean look, though this is completely pointless as it has to be removed immediately if you wish to actually use the product. So it looks good out of the box. MSI weren't really too creative here. The power input position is very standard at smack bang in the middle of the card, which does break up the design a bit, but whatever, it's functional or as functional as a 12 volt high powered connector gets. What you may have noticed is that there's no BIOS switch. Sadly, this expert model doesn't include a basic feature like dual BIOS functionality, which I find extremely disappointing on such a premium product. Now, in terms of dimensions, the card measures 319 millimeters long, so it's a big boy, and at 150 millimeters tall, it's certainly not a short graphics card. It also measures 60 millimeters wide, so it well and truly takes up three slots and will start to intrude on the fourth slot. Finally, in terms of weight, you're looking at 1898 grams, so only slightly lighter than MSI's RTX 5080 Vanguard SoC that I reviewed earlier in the year. Then moving around to the backplate, which has been 100% constructed from aluminium, so that's a really nice touch and it is surprisingly thick, making it very sturdy and quite heavy at 372 grams, that's including the fan. On the underside, there is a single thermal pad behind the GPU, so MSI is using the backplate as a sort of heat spreader to try and remove built up heat from the PCB. The backplate also wraps around to the very back of the card, so the opposite end to the IO panel, and this means the Expert is fully encased, giving it a very premium look. Then finally at the opposite end of the card, so the I.O. panel, you'll find three DisplayPort outputs with a single HDMI output, and that's on a dual slot bracket. As for the fan configuration, the Expert design is simple, yet very unique. The front side of the card features just a single intake fan, while at the opposite end of the rear side, 
is an exhaust fan. So this is a push-pull design that still sees the majority of the hot air dumped inside the case. Now, it's time to tear the card down fully, and please note, this was done after all thermal testing was completed. Removing the back plate is a quick and easy job. Simply remove six screws and it lifts off, exposing part of the massive heatsink along with the rear side of the PCB. After that, you are required to remove a further 11 screws, and this will allow you to fully disassemble the card, removing the heatsink from the PCB. The heatsink isn't crazy or anything. It weighs 840 grams and features two fin stacks connected via half a dozen 8mm thick nickel plated copper heat pipes. When compared to the previous Expert design, this newer 50 series model includes a significantly more compact vapor chamber area, so it looks as though MSI has tried to maximize the amount of airflow over the heatsink fins, which should improve thermal dissipation, providing they can just as efficiently extract the heat. Then we have a very compact PCB, which measures just 180mm long and 145mm tall. For power delivery, MSI has gone with an 11 plus 4 plus 3 power phase design using 50 amp power stages. Then for the memory, they are of course using Samsung's GDDR7 30 gigabits per second modules. And apart from the 12 volt high powered connector, there are two fan headers and of course no RGB nonsense here. Overall, I'd say MSI's RTX 5080 Expert looks to be a well-made graphics card, and I appreciate just how easy it is to fully disassemble and put back together. It really is about as easy as it gets, which makes replacing fans outside of warranty a much easier job than many other graphics cards that I've tested in the past. So, it's a well-designed card that I expect to perform well, so let's go look at that now. Here's a look at how the 5080 Expert operates after an hour of playing The Last of Us Part 1, at the 4K resolution using maximum in-game quality settings. These temperatures were recorded in a 21 degree room, installed inside an ATX case with the doors closed. Here we see that the GPU hit a peak of just 67 degrees at a fan speed of 1300 RPM, making the card very quiet, which is impressive given the roughly 325 watt load. We also saw the GDDR7 memory peak at 68 degrees, so as expected the MSI Expert cooler is working well. Sadly though, one feature missing from the Expert that I feel is an important feature is that dual BIOS support, so there's no secondary silent or performance BIOS that we can test out. So therefore, let's take a quick look at overclocking, at least for this sample. By default, the 5080 Expert boosted to a clock speed of 2835MHz in our test, and it operated the memory at 30 gigabits per second. I was able to overclock the cores, and this saw them operate at 3180 MHz in our test, and the memory ran at 31.6 gigabits per second. This resulted in an average power draw of 360 watts, and it increased the GPU temperature to 69 degrees, while the memory remained at 68 degrees, but the fan speed did increase to 1400 RPM. So a really great overclocking result, but to keep in mind we are looking at a sample size of just one here. Therefore, the results are likely to vary depending on silicon quality, which does make the overclocking section of these reviews potentially a bit inaccurate or misleading because not all cards are going to achieve the same overclock, but just keep that in mind. Now, when compared to past tested RTX 5080 models, of which there are very few, as we don't actually recommend you buy an RTX 5080 as pricing is very poor, just get yourself a 5070 Ti instead. And that being the case, we haven't really got that many 5080s in for review since release, and in fact this is only the third. Anyway, MSI sent us an RTX 5080 model, but if you want the expert, I suggest looking at the 5070 Ti version, as that'll probably be a better value choice. Interestingly, I have tested MSI's Vanguard SoC, and it did run 7 degrees cooler than the expert, and even has a secondary BIOS that allowed it to run even cooler. When noise normalized, the Vanguard SoC ran 5 degrees cooler than the Expert, so while the Expert is still a good performer, the bigger Vanguard SoC is technically better. And it's a similar story for the memory temperatures. Here the Expert ran 6 degrees hotter than the Vanguard, and even when noise normalized it was still 4 degrees hotter. Not a lot in it, but again the bigger Vanguard SoC is technically better here. Then predictably, the Expert delivers similar gaming performance to the Vanguard SoC, and even the Asus Astral, so not much to see in Dying Light 2. And of course, it's the same story in The Last of Us Part 1. Here the Expert averaged 76 FPS, which is the exact same result produced by the Vanguard SoC. 
Finally then we have Delta Force which confirms what we just saw in the previous two gaming tests. So therefore the gaming performance of the Expert is identical to that of the Vanguard SoC and probably most other RTX 5080s out of the box. Power consumption is very typical. Here the Expert is roughly on par with the Vanguard SoC, though be aware the figures here include power draw for both the PCIe and EPS rails. So CPU power draw is included as this is a more accurate method when comparing Radeon and GeForce power draw. Though here we are only looking at GeForce GPU, so need not apply. So there you have it, MSI's expert version of the RTX 5080. It's an impressive graphics card with a high quality design and it looks very unique. But outside of that, it doesn't really do anything new or special when compared to other RTX 5080s that we've already looked at and some of them arrived at the start of this year, like the Vanguard SoC. It does seem to me as though MSI is trying to create their own signature version of like an NVIDIA's Founders Edition graphics card. A no frills graphics card that's unlike the typical triple fan models. Fully wrapped in aluminium for that premium look and feel. It's not a bad idea. People love the FE models and in most regions you can't actually get them. And even when you can, they are often only available for a limited time. I'm just not sure if MSI can fill that void with the expert. After all, people just want the NVIDIA version because it's NVIDIA made. The FE models generally aren't that technically impressive, don't get me wrong, they're often quite well made, but they're rarely anywhere near the best performers, and the Expert 5080 is certainly better than the 5080 FE model in that regard. As for whether or not I'd recommend the RTX 5080 Expert, well, no I wouldn't, because I don't recommend you buy any RTX 5080 at all, because the pricing is atrocious and makes no sense, even at MSRP. So MSI made a bit of a mistake sending me this model, but thankfully they do have an RTX 5070 Ti version. Right now, over in the US, you can buy the MSI Shadow version of the RTX 5070 Ti for $800 US, which is just $50 US over MSRP. And then there's also the gaming model for $850 and the Vanguard for $860, though that model isn't in stock right now. In fact, most RTX 5070 Ti's in general are either out of stock or priced massively over the MSRP. MSI alone have the Shadow 3X, the Vanguard SoC, Gaming Trio Plus, Gaming Trio White, Gaming Trio, Inspire 3X, and now the Expert. So it seems a little bit strange to me introducing a new model eight months after the initial release when so many models either aren't in stock or a price so far above the MSRP due to limited availability that they're just not worth buying. Moreover, we're expecting the Super Refresh series later this year, so despite the fact that it already doesn't even make sense to buy an RTX 5080 right now, it really doesn't make sense when you consider that an RTX 5080 Super might just be mere months away from release. Now, as I was wrapping up this review, I finally got word from MSI on pricing. You know, that little detail, kind of important for reviewing a graphics card. And anyway, once I got this information, this is where things actually got really interesting and helped explain a few things, I suppose. As I mentioned several times now, RTX 5080 pricing in the US is atrocious. But even here in Australia, it's not particularly great, costing at least 25% more than a 5070 Ti for just low double digit gains and it has the same 16 gigabytes of VRAM. So in terms of value, the 5070 Ti is much better. It's what we recommend. Right now, the cheapest RTX 5080 on UEG costs $1,350 US, and then MSI's most affordable model is the Shadow 3X OC at $1,360 US, while you can expect to pay a truly insane $1,450 US for the Vanguard SOC. So then, the expert. What will this thing cost? Well, MSI tell me that it's going to hit shelves in the US for just $1,300 US. And yes, just $1,300 US, which admittedly would make it the cheapest RTX 5080 and 10% cheaper than the Vanguard SoC. So I guess you could say in RTX 5080 terms, that would make it cheap. But in the context of the entire market, it would still be 63% more expensive than the cheapest RTX 5070 Ti over at Newegg. So obviously that makes it very dumb. Therefore, no one in the US should be buying an RTX 5080 or RTX 5080 Expert. But even so, the pricing that MSI had set here, it had me curious. And this wasn't necessarily just an MSRP. They were pretty adamant that you will be able to purchase this model when it goes on sale for $1,300 US, making it the cheapest RTX 5080. So 
why is MSI charging? Well, I, again, I don't want to say so little, but why are they making this premium model cheaper than the Shadow 3X? Well, after some digging, it turns out these new expert models are made entirely in Taiwan. So that means nothing comes from China, mainland China. Therefore, they do avoid the US tariffs. And yeah, we're not, we're not getting all the political stuff. And I know there's been other uh, really exciting tariff announcements from the Trump administration, which you know we're not going to cover here because I'm not, not sure when they're going in effect or if they even are. But by making this product in Taiwan, MSI believe they're able to avoid the tariffs, at least with the existing rules they should be able to, uh, and all other models are built in China, um, such as, you know, well, the, obviously the GPU is made in Taiwan, TSMC, but then it is shipped over to China where they make stuff like the cooler and possibly the PCB and other components. But basically it is assembled in China and then sold as sort of a product of China. So the expert should avoid that stuff, making it, I don't know, this is the tariff edition. Of course, for other regions, all this nonsense won't apply, though MSI does tell me the expert will be priced slightly below the Vanguard. So that's something. It is meant to be uh, under the Vanguard. So despite the all aluminium design and the sort of flashy professional appearance that they've gone with, this is meant to be a cheaper product than the Vanguard. So that is pretty good news, I suppose. Locally here in Australia, the RTX 5080 Vanguard cost $2,580, and MSI expects the expert to come in at $2,500, which is 25% more than the $2,000 you'd expect to pay for the Shadow model. So pretty crazy premium there, and it means at minimum, this 5080 expert here in Australia will cost about 50% more than an entry-level 5070 Ti. And again, same VRAM buffer, and it's, you know, 10, maybe, maybe 10 to 15% faster, let's say. Now, I did inquire about an RTX 50 Ti expert, so to get the pricing on that particular model. And in the US, MSI tells me they're targeting an MSRP of $880 US, which is well below the Vanguard MSRP of $970 US, again, due to the fact that the expert models are produced in Taiwan and not China. That said, keep in mind, you can buy the MSI RTX 5070 Ti Shadow for $800 US, but even so, I think 10% more for the expert seems like a pretty good deal. Anyway, MSI's founder edition model, I mean, their expert model, I think it looks good. Um, obviously, you know, subjective. It's certainly a high quality product. I like that it's wrapped in aluminium. It feels very premium, sort of like the founder edition models do. But Sadly, unfortunately, RTX 5080s just don't make sense. So we'll have to see how pricing for the 5070 Ti Expert pans out. But if it's competitive, then yeah, it will be worth checking out for those of you after a more professional looking graphics card. And that is going to do it for this review. Sort of an interesting one. I wish a lot of the uh, information that I got didn't come uh, just before wrapping up the video because yeah, the Expert makes a bit more sense now. Uh, the fact that, you know, they're trying to avoid those US tariffs and stuff by producing it all in Taiwan. I think just that fact alone is kind of interesting. The fact that this is produced entirely, I suppose you could say, in-house uh, for MSI. Anyway, that is going to it for this review. If you liked it, I guess give it a thumbs up. Don't imagine there'll be any RTX uh, 5080 reviews coming up. So if that's what you're on the lookout for, then yeah, probably don't subscribe for those because this would surely be the last one. But, you know, maybe there'll be some 5080 supers and stuff like that coming up in the future. Uh, we also have the join button or Patreon. You can sign up to either one of those and that'll give you access to our exclusive Discord server, monthly live streams, Q&A stuff, and behind the scenes content. So check that out if you're interested, but if not, it's perfectly fine. And of course, I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time.